Hey guys, and welcome back. Let me take you on a tour of this V2500-A5 engine. We're going to take a look at some components and component location. If you have any questions about these, please feel free to ask in the comments. First things first, that's the oil tank. Right up top, that's called the FCOC, Fuel Cooled Oil Cooler. Right below, you'll find a chip detector right there, the master chip detector. Right below that, that is called the FMU, the Fuel Metering Unit. A little further down below, we're going to take a look at the hydraulic pump right there. And right next to it is the alternator. And right next to that, the starter. Let's keep on trucking right here. As you can see, these chip detectors are everywhere. They collect any kind of metal particles within the system. That big thing right there, that's the IDG, integrated drive generator. Right above that is the ACOC, air cool oil cooler. It works much like a radiator. It will take the outside air and vent it through that little radiator and cool the oil. Along with all the ducting and wiring, let's go take a look inside the core. These three circles right here are the bleed valves for the 7th and 10th stage of the engine. They release the excess air from the compressor section. This unit, this little actuator is very important. It's called the ACC, actuator, active clearance control. This rod will move and allow air to go through these little tubes, the ACC tubes. They keep the turbine section in a proper and nominal temperature. So the case expansion or contraction does not exceed. It is controlled by fuel. Along with all the harnesses right there is your fire detection system, the fire loop. You've seen my video on that one. This little hole on the side, that's called a TAI duct. It's the exhaust duct for the nose cowling anti-ice. On the other side of the engine, another important actuator, the VSV actuator, variable stator vanes. Excuse the pause, I always hear air airplanes, I gotta go take a look. <laughs> a lovely DHL taking off. Now back to the engine. That actuator is interlinked with a ring that surrounds the engine and moves around and moves little veins in order to get proper compressor airflow and to prevent any kind of stalls. Up next, we're gonna take a look at this little valve. That's called the IP valve, intermediate pressure valve. All right up top, that's called the PRSOV valve, pressure regulating valve. Further up into the pylon, you'll find other various valves, one of which is called the fan air valve. Very difficult to change, actually. The rest is almost identical to the other side. You'll see the ACC tubes. That is the fuel manifold that goes into the combustion section. Take a look at the other side of the engine again, because I want to show you where the igniter plugs go. And there they are, two of them, channel A and channel B. Remember, redundancy as always. The cables will route themselves forward and go to That's right, the exciter boxes, right there. These put out incredible amount of voltage. Right up top there, that is called the EEC, electronic engine control. That's the brains of the operation. This right here is the starter duct. This is how the starter gets its air from the APU or the other engine. That right there is the starter valve. We can manually turn this open and start the engine manually. To the left, these are solenoids. They control the seventh and 10th stage bleed valves. Last but not least, everybody always asks, what's that thing inside the intake? That's called the P2-T2 sensor. Monitors pressure and temperature of the inlet. That's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.